Hindustan Aeronautics plans to manufacture five pre-production Tejas Mark II aircraft that will be used extensively for development flight trials, and it has issued a tender for the construction of new hangars that will accommodate the pre-production aircraft that are currently under fabrication. As per latest reports, the rollout of the first Tejas Mark II aircraft will happen by end of 2022, and the first flight that was expected by December 2023 has been preponed and might happen in August 2023. HAL has recently received a new UTAM Mark II radar for the Tejas Mark II program, and it has already begun mandatory testing of the new radar. The RDO's Naval Science and Technological Laboratory has released a tender for the supply of five units of mobile satellite services transreceiver electronics, and five units each of MSSTX and RX antenna along with five units of radium, that will be used in the High Endurance Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, for providing a two-way communication of Location Health Status Mission Summary Command and Control. Documents reveal that it can undertake autonomous missions for a duration of 15 days, and will have a speed of 30 knots, and will come to sea surface to use the Rukmini satellite link for two-way communication with the mission control and transfer of data with ships and submarines. It will also be compatible with GSAT-7 and upcoming satellites in the future. At a time when the air forces of India and Egypt are holding a major joint exercise in Egypt, the chief of the Egyptian Air Force along with a high-level delegation will arrive in India next week, to scout for Indian defense equipment that can be developed with joint collaboration. Hindustan Aeronautics has offered its stages lift variant for Egyptian requirement for 70 lead-in fighter trainer, and set up a local production line and technology transfer for the aircraft. HAL has also offered its advanced light helicopter and the light combat helicopter to Egypt. <laughs> Defence Minister Rajnath Singh visited a unit of Bharat Dynamics Limited in Telangana, where he inaugurated a warhead manufacturing facility, and a new radio frequency seeker facility, which is an integrated centre for production and testing of RF seekers, that will be used in all future missiles. The Defence Minister also commended Bharat Dynamics Limited for working on the Amogha third-generation man-portable anti-tank guided missile, that has a range of 2.5 km, and can engage targets in both top attack mode and direct mode, and can penetrate more than 650 mm explosive reactive armour. In response to the Indian Army's request for information for the procurement of 800 light armoured multi purpose vehicles, Tata Motors will offer its Defence Combat Light Armoured Multi Role Vehicle, which is a 4x4 light patrol vehicle that features all composite detachable crewpod, a full 360 degree azimuth turret, with a seating capacity of 4 personnel and 2 crew members. It has a maximum road speed of 105 km per hour, and can be equipped with charge-coupled device cameras, thermal imaging systems and laser range finder. The open-top turret is mounted with a 12.7 mm machine gun, and can be optionally armed with a range of weapon stations, smoke grenade launchers, and automatic fire detection and suppression system. The Indian Defence Secretary has said, that for the recently concluded deal with Airbus and Tata for 56 C-295 tactical aircraft, more than 125 Indian micro small and medium enterprises have been roped in to supply 13,200 detailed parts 4,600 sub-assemblies and all seven major component assemblies. He also informed, that assemblies of aero structure and sub-assemblies will also be done in India, and 96% level of indigenization will be achieved for the made in India C-295 aircraft, and all 56 aircraft will be installed with the indigenous electronic warfare suite.